Hello, I'm Indiana Jones and welcome to my channel where crafting is always an adventure. Our adventure today takes us on a thrift flip road trip hosted by two wonderful special channels and three very special friends. So let's take off to some exotic places to get started. Let's go. Let me show you what I got. Oh yes. Yes. No dumplings. No dumpling. That's fine. It works for me. Well, I had a good shopping day that day at the dumpster because I found not one silver frame, but two. And look at this one. This one's even prettier than that larger one. It is smaller and it's just perfect for the project that I have in mind. Of course, it's going to be shabby chic, spring inspired. And all I'm doing here, it, it did have some scratches and some scuffs. So all I'm doing here is using that sample paint, that whole tub of paint that you see right there. And it's good quality paint, it's bare paint that I get at Home Depot. And I use that for larger projects. And that was just 50 cents, I know. I know, 50 cents. Look and check your own hardware store to see if they have those samples left over. Once I painted it, before it dries, I use a wipey just to wipe down the um, paint so you can see a lot of the details behind it. Now I'm using this Dollar Tree silver tray. I know you guys have seen it. Everyone has seen these trays. And of course, I'm painting it the same color as the frame. And again, I'm going to use the same technique that I used on the frame on this silver platter. And I love this idea for a shabby chic look to add to any decor. And you know, I love shabby chic. It's my thing. It's my jam. So now I'm adding these little Easter eggs that I am painting. Well, I'm painting and distressing because I'm painting it with the paint first and then I'm wiping it down with the wipey as I did for the frame and as I did for the tray. Now, I'm going to do something different with this. I'm going to use my clay and embellish those little Easter eggs with these wonderful frames that I got. They're small frames that you can use. Um, and of course, they're in these, um, uh, what you call it, molds, I'm sorry. And you just use the air dry clay in the molds. And of course, you use a little bit of baking soda or baking powder. And so it can release easily. And then I just fit it onto my Easter egg. I'm doing the same with these other trims and it just adds so much more. As you can see, there's a little bee on that yellow egg and here I'm adding a little bit of a fleur-de-lis kind of look to my blue egg. And this is just going to look, you look so lovely when it's all together. Now, this is one of my favorite tricks to do in creating metal looking flowers. Recently on Teresa of Our Green Acres, she had this beautiful frame that had these wonderful, huge wooden flowers. I don't know if it was metal or wooden, but they were beautiful. And that inspired me to create this design for my project today. All I'm doing is using these small appetizer, I think they're appetizer um, spoons that you can get at the Dollar Tree. As you heat them up, they actually lose a little bit of the silver tone and look a little bit more like pewter, which is perfect. Now, you have to be careful and you have to be patient. Don't set the spoon on fire. I know. I know. You know that I like to work with fire. But just be very gentle and very patient as you wait for the spoon to heat up. You can shape it into flower petals. Now, many people have done this with the larger spoons. And here I am just cutting off quote unquote, the little petal so I can add it to the uh, flower bud, to the rosebud. And many people do this with the larger um, spoons, but if you use the smaller spoons, it just gives it such a different look. You can even, I've even used them as jewelry, believe it or not, and people naturally think that it's pewter, but this is perfect to embellish any frame or a mirror. It's so many things that you can do with these wonderful plastic spoon um yes plastic spoons i don't know what else to call them plastic spoons these miniature plastic spoons so here i am just finishing up that one flower and now you can see all three of them together and look how lovely they look once they're all together 
And what you have to keep in mind, because these are plastic spoons, you can embellish them and paint them so that they match the rest of your project. Now, of course, I'm going to make a beautiful shaggy, shaggy rag um, tag tassel. I don't know what to call it. Shaggy rag tag tassel, shaggy rag tag tassel. Yes, and I'm going to add the little Easter eggs that I made as embellishments to my tassel. Now, what I did was I did glue the tassel to the platter um, at the very top. So you can see all the lovely colors of ribbons. I used ribbons, I used lace, I used ripped up um, fabrics and burlap. And now I'm going to embellish it with those beautiful plastic spoon roses. And I'm also going to embellish them with some treasures that I found at my local antique store. So here I'm just adding the plastic roses. And as you can see, no one from far away would ever imagine that these started out as plastic appetizer spoons. That's why I love doing this project and especially with my shabby chic decor. So here I am painting those flowers. As I mentioned before, you can paint them in any color and distress them. And I also added to this some broken jewelry, some vintage broken jewelry that I bought in an antique store. And here is a little sneak peek to the finished product. I am so blessed not just to be part of this challenge, but to know to both of these channels so well. I love my three friends here, Teresa of Our Green Acres and Kay and Trish, the crafting cousins. I was so excited and thrilled about this thrift flip road trip open challenge. Try saying that five times and you'll see how much you trip up on this thrift flip road trip open challenge. Anyway, let's continue with the trip and with more thrift flips. My next not so exotic location, my neighbors. That's right, my neighbors. Now this is thanks to a neighbor just down the street. I found these small little drawers and I picked up two of them just in case. I'm, I'm saving the one of the second ones for another project. But for this one, I had to start by taking off the front of that drawer. I can use that for another project up in the future because it's just for mica and I can paint it and use it for something else. But for right now, let's focus on the drawer. Here I am taking out all the hardware, the screws, the, the original handle on that drawer. And next, I'm going to use that same paint that I used before and paint all over. But before, of course, I cleaned it with crud cutter. We all love crud cutter because you got to cut the crud. So after I dried it and cleaned it with the crud cutter, I am now painting it. But now I'm using another sample paint. Isn't this a beautiful springy green? I thought how perfect. Because it was gray, I just thought maybe it would be better to use a color on this one for the backdrop of my shaggy chic drawer decor. Now to embellish this drawer, I am using these wonderful labels from Graphics Fairy. So just look up vintage labels and there are some in French, there are some that are black and white and these beautiful colorful ones, which I thought were perfect for spring. So this is what I'm going to use to decorate and embellish this little drawer. And what a transformation this makes. I mean, look at this, it's so cute. And I love using Teresa's, and I think the cousins use it as well, using, um, water to help frame out the picture that you want to cut out and instead of cutting it out you just rip it out so it has that wonderful jagged edge and it looks even more vintage now some i did that and some i didn't and here's the other side of that drawer and again just the loveliest labels that you could ever find there at graphics fairy now i'm going to distress it don't get bit get distressed taxes are due next month oh my gosh Oh, people. Okay, now it's distressed enough. I'm distressed enough. Anyway, I'm distressing the little drawer just to give it a little more character. And now I'm going to add some stamps. I could have also used some stencils. That's one of the things I really love about doing shabby chic. You can use decoupage, stamps, stenciling, and it's just so much fun. And here I'm adding a beautiful crystal knob that I had gotten at the Dollar Tree. And soon you'll see a final look. 
Now, I was very tempted to leave this just as it is. Oh, I really, I wonder if I did the right thing or not. Oh, I don't know. But I did get this at the thrift store. It was only $3. I got this at Goodwill. And I really loved, I actually even loved the whole airplane look on the outside. Now, I didn't want to ruin the leather straps and the leather trim. So I'm taking out all the trim and the closures as well as the hinges so that I can paint it and I'll just be careful with the leather trim because I really did like the leather trim. Oh, I wonder, don't you wonder sometimes, do you stop and think to yourself, oh, should I do this, should I not, should I paint it, should I not? It's really hard, but to tell you the honest truth, this does not match any of my decor unless I was steampunk. Oh, this would have been so cool for steampunk. Oh, well, I could always paint it again. That's the good thing is if you know how to do this, you can always paint it again. Here I am cleaning with crud cutter, cut the crud. Um, yeah, this was pretty dirty, so yeah, I, I needed to clean it inside and out, and um, but I think it was well worth it. For $3, I would never have been able to find this cute little faux luggage set. Or some of my ribbons or my embellishments, I have, I need more storage. Don't we all need more storage? Or we, or, or we need to get rid of some stuff. So here I am very carefully outlining and trimming the, again, I'm using that wonderful paint that I got from, I hate to say it, Plaid, I'm sorry, but this is so much cheaper, and especially for large projects like this, I don't mind spending 50 cents. And uh, it's wonderful. It has great coverage because it is a little thicker because it is for, you know, technically for walls and stuff. And I, I did do two coats because of that plain design. Oh, I'm looking at it now and I'm still thinking, should I have kept it like that? Anyway, it's done. It's done. I think it'll come out really pretty in the end. I liked it. I like the end result as well. And now all I'm doing is uh, painting it all over. And I think it looks nice. I think it looks nice. At least I think the end result will look really, really nice. Well, now that I see it all finished and painted, it does really look nice. Now I've added all the locks and hinges, and now I thought it would be really too cool to use this wonderful stencil. Of course, it has to be Paris. Of course, it has to be Paris, but I have this beautiful stencil, and I thought I would like to have just one large, big stencil. And I'm using a very, almost black-brown color to match the leather. I kept it very monotone. I didn't want to add too many stamps or anything, and I still could. I can add some labels and some other stencils, but I wanted to keep it simple because sometimes I overdo it. Does that happen to you? You start stenciling and then you add this and you add that and you add this. And for Shabby Chic, it's a wonderful concept because you can do that and get away with it. But sometimes it's nice to just keep it, keep it simple. So for this one, I just kept it simple. And I really do like the outcome when you see, when I do the reveal, dun, 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 bam, look how pretty, I like that. Now, what I usually do is I try to stamp off, you know, any excess paint that might be left behind because I'm not using an ink pad or anything like that for my stencil, I'm just using regular paint. And here I added some, you know, I don't know, I just thought it was pretty to have some handwriting on the other side and a little Paris stamp just to finish it off. And there you have it. I hope you're enjoying this thrift flip road trip stop in Florida and specifically here in Miami. But I hope you continue this trip with all the other wonderful creators and collaborators as part of this playlist. Thanks again to Teresa, Kay, and Trish to host this wonderful open challenge. Now, let's continue on this trip. This is also a thrifted find and what a perfect find for spring this was also only three dollars and i was so incredibly lucky because this is a very large watering can and i have been in the mood for, to find a watering can i see them as so expensive in hobby lobby and michael's and all the home stores and this was like i said a steal now i wanted to add a little bit of a whitewash just to make it look it was black it was just a plain black so i thought this was a perfect way to, I don't know, spring it up. Spring it up? Yes, spring it up. Now, this design that you see that I'm using here, I actually created this myself on Canva. And I wanted to pick out something that could work very easily for spring, summer, and fall, and possibly even winter. 
because I want to have this um, watering can up in my kitchen and have it up all year and just change the flowers out for each of the seasons. So I'm going to include this design down below in, in my description so that you can download and use it for yourself. And as I said, I did design this myself. Um, I, you know, designed the back page and, and the flowers were a drawing that were already there in Canva, but the rest, I just put it together. So I'm going to be creating some more designs in Canva for you to use. And here's just an example of how you can use it. So here, all I'm going to do is, of course, using Mod Podge from the Black family of products. I'm going to Mod Podge that wonderful decor, decoration or painting and just make it look very vintage and perfectly shabby chic and ready for spring. And all I have to do is add whatever flowers I'd like for each and every season. And it's just going to sit upon my, I don't know, kitchen counter at times, maybe up on the shelves in my, in my kitchen or above my shelves. And here I'm just sealing it with my Mod Podge once again. I'm really happy with how all of these projects turned out. But let's take a final look and you tell me which one was your favorite project. Thank you again for stopping by and visiting my channel. If this is your first time here, please introduce yourself in the comments below. And if this was fun and interesting for you, I hope you like, share, and subscribe and come back for more. As I always say, stay safe, be kind, God bless each and every one of you, and remember to live the adventure. I hope to see you again very soon.